we come along and we are doing database things where transactions are arriving. People were making requests to the database, and there is no right answer. Um, there's, there are wrong answers, but there's no single right answer. And so we were trying to figure out, well, how, how do you actually say that? And the answer is, well, there are certain invariants. There are certain properties you want to preserve. Like if it's a theater and you're selling seats, you don't want to sell the same tw seat twice to different people. You don't even want to sell twice to the same person. But, okay. So um, we tried to come up with a theory that described, or a, um, a set of rules that described the kind of concurrency that could be allowed. And, uh, you know, in retrospect, it seems really straightforward. Um, uh, at the time, it wasn't exactly straightforward. Uh, and, in fact, there were lots of different approaches that people took. Um, some of them have fallen by the wayside. Some of them have, you know, prospered. Uh, uh, so uh, we concluded that if you did the following things, then it's as though you ran one transaction at a time. Okay? And, um, uh, and running one transaction at a time is not going to have any concurrency anomalies. So if you run things in parallel and you get a behavior that's identical to some serial schedule, some running one thing after another after another, then you don't have any concurrency anomalies. Okay? Everybody can understand that. It's pretty straightforward. And then the question is, so how do you get the maximum concurrency and still preserve this appearance of sequential execution? And, um, and uh, we developed a bunch of strategies for that that are all uh, generally called locking. Uh, just what, what do you keep hidden until, uh, or what do you block people from doing until uh, um, uh, the previous transaction is completed. So that's um, the concurrency stuff, and we implemented that, and there was a lot of interplay between our implementation and other people who'd done implementations, and us learning from them and them learning from us. And then somebody came along and said, um, well, what are the, the properties that you really want of transactions? And Andreas Reuter, is, in fact, the co-author on this book, is the guy who coined uh, the term acid. It's a pun on the fact that his wife hates sweet things and loves vinegar. Um, and, uh, um, and it's basically that the, atom the uh, transactions should be atomic. They should be all or nothing. Uh, they should be consistent. They should transform the database from a correct state to another correct state, uh, that once the transaction uh, um, completes, it should be durable. And that's where the D comes from, that its effect should persist forever. And that the transaction should run as though there are no other transactions executing. So it should run in isolation. And that's what I stands for in ACID. So two ways of thinking of it. It's a pun on the fact that Christiana doesn't like sugar. Another way of thinking of it is that um, it is uh, uh, this at atomicity, durability, isolation, and consistency property. It's become quite famous. Yeah, it has. I mean, people talk about the acid properties. It's also a pun on the acid test for you know, yes. the goodness and badness of things. 